have uh, been asked to to share Dell's work on the science-based targets. Um, and uh, actually, we were uh, amongst the first companies to to uh, to be out there in the world with the science-based targets in 2015. Um, but actually, we had the targets before then. We had them back in 2013. So, um, so this is what I'm going to share with you today, very specifically uh, focusing on on that part of the piece piece of the picture. Um, good. So, first of all, definition of uh, science-based targets. What are we talking about here? Um, and it is targets adopted by companies. So it's a company-focused framework to reduce carbon emissions um, enough to stay below the two degree uh, Celsius increase of temperature. Um, so basically, you can read the definition. In short, it is this is what you need to do as a company if you want to do your part in reaching the Paris Agreement and keep uh, temperatures below uh, the two degrees Celsius maximum. And you know, all know that we're not quite there yet in terms of, of the global scale. <coughs> so science-based targets is, uh, is one piece of what we do, but target-based sustainability is how we do things in Dell. Uh, back in 2013, we launched our 2020 Legacy of Good Plan, which is 21 goals, very specific goals, across social, environmental, um, and uh, and in that sense also business uh, focused, but, but social and environmental goals across our supply chain, our own operations, but also our supply chain, and also how we work in relation to our customers, the energy efficiency of our products being, being one of these. Um, so, so, so our science-based targets, our climate targets are amongst uh, these 21 goals. And actually, we have an overall uh, goal of creating 10 times net positive value for society. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with the net positive value framework? Yeah, this is a good, <laughs> this is a good crowd. <laughs> and not many people, again, uh, know about the net positive value. But this is basically to say, also, as Jeff is talking about, less bad is not, is not an option. Uh, it has to be how can we as a company be regenerative? How can we contribute to, to the positive uh, future? So, so we're working with that as well. And our goal is to create 10 times more positive impact for the world. So a handprint that is 10 times uh, more than the footprint of producing and using our technologies. So, and this whole legacy good plan came out of, of a, a process in, in 2011 where we were looking at reassessing, okay, at that time, uh, Dell was working with sustainability goals as well, but more in silos and not with, with an overall strategic framework. So, so this became the legacy of good plan and really looking at the materiality assessment of what is important, where do we have our negative impact, what is important in, in relation to our business. So there could be 500 goals, but we had to, um, I think 21 is still uh, quite, quite many. So the environmental goals, uh, we have 12 environmental goals, and uh, you see them up here. So one is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from our facility and logistics operations by 50%. So that's our scope one uh, uh, goal in terms of climate. And another one is to reduce the energy intensity of our product portfolio by 80% because our assessments showed that, that where we had the big impact was actually not from our direct emissions because we do not have, we have a, a bit of production, but most of the production is from suppliers, so that's not within our direct scope. Um, so so our, our largest emission was in scope three in terms of the energy uh, consumption of our products, um, and by the way, we're also working on the energy um, consumption with our suppliers to have them work with the energy production plants. So, so these were the goals, and then I've just highlighted this one because I'm very proud to say that uh, that this year, uh, or just last year, we have actually uh, just reached our 2020 goal in terms of the amount of recycled um, material in our products. So, uh, so that's a uh, that's a hooray for that. Uh, one down and uh, on track to meet the others as well. So this is our timeline. So, so we started out 2011 to, to reset Dell's strategy here on sustainability um, and, and developing the legacy of good goals, which we announced in 2013. So this is when we actually came out with also with our carbon emission energy reduction goals. And then, of course, we had the whole Road to Paris movement and the science-based targets really coming in and taking a position and offering um, 
a framework that really tells you as a company also, so when is it when is it good enough? And I think that is one of the challenges often when we look at sustainability goals, often is relative in terms of uh, percentage better improvements from last year or whatever, but these absolute sustainability goals, when it is enough, when are you actually you know, at the benchmark, when are you on the positive side? So, um, so we thought, hey, yeah, that's a good idea to uh, to actually have that measured, and let's see if our existing goals can be approved according to the science-based uh, target framework, uh, or whether we need to adjust them. So we work with the science-based target um, group, and actually the goals that we had and the methodology that we used to get there um, was approved uh, that this is a science-based uh, target. So, so disclaimer: we actually came in. Backwards, we did not use the official science-based targets process, but but our goals, the outcome, and I think that's what is most, most important, is the actual science-based target goals here. And now what's uh, what's coming up in the future? Of course, these goals are, are going to be, uh, they count until 2020. Um, I actually just came from, from strategy sessions uh, in, in the global team in Austin last week, and, and we already started to talk about, of course, so what's, what's going to be next? after 2020 and um, and I can say that our next framework, our next timeline is going to be 2030. So we are starting up now to see, starting up that process and of course the sustainable development goals will also be a part of the whole 2030 exercise. So that's a little bit of the pre-launch pre here. So this is our targets and our progress so far. Um, and actually these numbers are by now a year old because financial year 2016 ended one year ago uh, in February 16. So at that time we were at 21.8%. I don't have the actual um, new uh, percentage. We'll get that out in, in June. So, but uh, almost halfway there. And in terms of the energy intensity of our pro products, where our goal is to reduce um, by, uh, by 80%, so increasing energy efficiency, we are also more than halfway there with 43% of, uh, of energy reduction. And this is really, so one thing is the energy um, use of, of products, hardware, like computers or like servers or, or monitors. And what we're also seeing as an IT company, that, that digitalization, virtual, virtualization, big data, Internet of Things, the whole digital transformation that we're living in right now is contributing to, to an energy efficiency that's much higher than what you can actually do with the hardware. So, so that's a huge potential here in terms of the digital transformation, also driving smarter cities, smarter buildings, smarter production, what have you. So, but, but we're not that that part is is difficult to measure, however, because that's a lot of proxies when you get out. That's almost scope th scope four actually, if there is a scope four, I'm not sure. Um, so uh, to round up, I promise to be uh, short on time and then leave more time for for questions and dialogue uh, with the, with you guys. A few challenges and, and a lot of benefits. So some of the challenges we have faced is, um, well, collecting and coordinating data. Um, and I say you, you have to mean it. I mean, don't, don't rush into science-based targets unless you have the organization behind you, unless you have the data sets. Uh, and obviously, if you don't have those data sets, then, then work to make sure you have them. Um, it is a substantial exercise, but what we have seen is that it really we had we were working on it already, obviously, and uh, and it does give a lot of value to to have the actual data. Um, then, in terms of um, of product design and innovation, so energy efficiency is one one goal uh, for for our engineers, uh, but of course it can never compromise the product performance. So it's balancing that. Um, you see, putting in that balance, balance, and in that way, it's also become an innovation driver. So that's also in the benefits. But, but uh, I love engineers because when you give them a challenge, you know, it's not, it's never innovation out of the box, out in the blue. Here, it's innovation into the box. It is keep the high performance, uh, lower energy efficiency, design for recyclability, use no harmful substances, and use recycled materials as much as you can. So this is the innovation space that we're giving our engineers, and, and they love it. It's great. Um, so, and last but not least, also balancing sensitive uh, information with the transparent communication. We we have a goal of being, we want to be very transparent and we are very transparent. But of course, sometimes there is business sensitive information that we don't want to put out there. And one could be exactly how are we driving the energy efficiency of our products. Obviously, we don't 
and our competitors to well, on one hand we do like want them to um, to also work with that but but obviously this is some business sensitive information and uh, a lot of benefits as well um, we are showing our commitment as uh, to sustainability as a company so not only having our own targets but also have them approved as science-based by an external and, and acknowledged organization or group of organizations um, we have been getting a lot of attention and recognition as a sustainability leader because we were amongst the first 12 companies to to have the science-based targets i know the number is now 216 who have signed 206 who companies worldwide who have signed up and i'm not quite sure as to to the number of companies who actually have the targets uh, today um, we are creating energy savings for our customers, which is good for the planet, good for the customers, and also, of course, uh, means that the customers will, will go for, for our products when they are the highest on energy efficiency um, most of the time. This is actually one of the things I see when I'm speaking to our customers and say, okay, so if you look at the total cost of ownership here, you can actually save money by choosing a more energy efficient product. And then quite often I hear, oh, yes, but that's two different departments. So I'm in procurement of IT, but the energy cost is in the facility side, the operations in my company, says the company that we're selling to, or the public organization. Um, so that's, uh, that's an invitation to, to companies and organizations to, to really combine those uh, two uh, sets of um, data and financial, financial streams. Yes, we're driving innovation. As I said, this is also when you hear Michael Dell talk about sustainability, this is one of the things that he's also pushing uh, to the engineers. And, um, and last but not least, not only the science-based targets, but our overall commitment to sustainability is also, of course, uh, contributing to, to, to showing that Dell is, uh, is, a, is a good workplace and, and that is needed also to attract the new generation of, of employees, the millennials. And I guess all of us here in the room today, we're kind of pre-millennials, right? So that's all from me uh, in those uh, short, but uh, hopefully efficient 10 minutes. And uh, Thank you, Louise. We give you a warm hand. Stay on the stage. <laughs>